Hi, in this problem, we're asked to find the Ronskian of this set. So it's the set containing the functions x, x squared, and x cubed. And then we're asked if it's linearly independent on this interval. So let's go ahead and find the Ronskian, and then we'll answer the question of independence. So the Ronskian of these functions is given by the determinant of... So in the first row, you just write the functions. So x x squared, x cubed. In the second row, you just take the derivative. So the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Just using the power rule, you bring down the 3, subtract 1, etc. And in the third row, you take the derivative once more. So the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. Okay, so now we're going to compute the derivative, and there's a couple ways to do this. In fact, using cofactor expansion, there's six different solutions. You can expand along the first row, second row, third row, or first column, second column, third column. I'm going to expand along the first column. So let's do that. So expanding along the first column using what's called cofactor expansion. So we take the x times, and then there's always a negative 1, and it's row plus column. So we're in the first row, first column, so 1 plus 1. And then what you do is you cross out the corresponding row and column, and then we take the determinant of this remaining submatrix. Again, it's the x negative 1, first row, first column, 1 plus 1, cross out the corresponding row and column, take the determinant of the remaining submatrix. I'm going to go ahead and erase those lines. Okay, so we have 2x, 2, 3x squared, 6x. Now, if that was a little confusing, it's okay. Um, this takes some time to learn. The next step will make it maybe a little more clear. So plus, now we're going to this one here, the 1 because we're using the first column, so you do each of the entries in the first column. So 1, and then again, negative 1, row plus column. We're in the second row, first column. Second row, first column. So 2 plus 1. Then you take the determinant of the remaining submatrix. So second row, first column. We're left with x squared, x cubed, 2, and 6x. So we'll take the determinant of that remaining submatrix. I'm going to erase my lines. So, boom, boom, x squared, x cubed. And then, boom, boom, 2, 6x. I'm just going to come down to the next line here. Plus, oh, I don't have to. Plus, it doesn't matter here because it's 0 times, and then it's negative 1 row plus column, etc. But who cares? I'm just going to put stuff because it's all going to be 0 anyways. That's why I chose to use the first column to do the cofactor expansion because I knew that if I use the first column, it would save me some time, right? That's the key. <laughs> so uh, some foresight, you know, otherwise I would have just picked the first row. So W, which is the Ronskian. Let's clean this up here a little bit. Um, this is negative 1 squared, so it's negative 1 to an even power, so it's going to be 1. So x times 1 is just x times, and then here we have these little baby determinants. 2x times 6x is going to give us 12x squared. Okay, 2x times 6x is 12x squared, minus 3x squared times 2, which is going to give us 6x squared, just like that. So you want to be very, very careful. And then, over here, same thing. This one is going to be a negative one. And that's because we have negative 1 to an odd power. So in this case, um, it's going to be negative 1. Whenever you have negative 1 to an odd power, it's always negative. Times this times this. So x squared times 6x will be 6x cubed minus, and then 2 times x cubed, so 2x cubed. And then all of this doesn't matter because it's just 0. So w is equal to 
Let's distribute this x. x times 12x squared is 12x cubed. And then x times negative 6x squared is negative 6x cubed. I could have just subtracted here. I don't know why I did that. In fact, let me, I just feel weird for doing that. So I'm just going to like x, you can actually just subtract these. So this is going to be 6x squared minus, and this will be 4x cubed, right? Because 6 minus 2 is 4. So we have w. So x times 6x squared is 6x cubed minus 4x cubed, and that's equal to 2x cubed. And the question was, are these, so that's the Ronskian. So we found the Ronskian, and so that is uh, the answer. So the question was, uh, is, is this set of functions uh, linearly uh, independent uh, on this interval here, negative infinity to infinity? So there is uh, a theorem that says if the Ronskian is non-zero for at least one point in the interval, um, it's going to be linearly uh, independent uh, on that interval. So for example, uh, at x equals one, uh, the Ronskian is equal to two and it's non-zero. So we have that the Ronskian is non-zero for at least one point in the interval, negative infinity to infinity. Therefore, it's linearly independent on the entire interval. That's a uh, theorem. So the answer is yes, linearly independent. Again, if you have uh, a non-zero Ronskian that uh, it's not zero for at least one point on an interval, then it's linearly independent. Okay, so now if, if the Ronskian is equal to zero on the entire interval, okay, and if the functions are solutions to the same linear DE, then it's dependent, but um, that's not what we're investigating here, and that was a lot to, to think about. So non-zero Ronskian, independent. Zero Ronskian, you got to be careful. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.